This week on the Push Willows podcast, we have the countdown to PT Core. Finally, we also have a protein bar review, a lot of the episodes about weight loss expectations, and some questions from the ground. <laughs> All right, three, two, one, mate. I'm absolutely Hank Marvin. Hey guys, welcome to the Push Pull Legs podcast with myself, Damik, and me, Tom Hall. This meeting's being recorded, Dan. It is. The, Tom. Tom didn't know about the new Zoom lady that says this meeting's being recorded. Hell. I know. In my ears, I was like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> who's this?" I was like, "We." As I said, we use Teams a hell of a lot, but. Yeah, I haven't been on a Zoom since Daniel last week. Um, I wasn't on one pre before Daniel last week, but there wasn't one. Mm. There. So yeah, wow, how exciting! New Zoom lady. Yeah. If you're recording your Zoom, just press record. Okay, nice lady, talk to you for a little bit. Just in case you're on a Zoom by yourself and you want to talk to someone for a, <laughs> yeah. for a little bit. I, I assume it's because people are maybe complained that they don't know when they're being recorded. Yeah, I think you like you can kind of it's it's. It's quite subtle, isn't it? Unless you've got it on the top hand screen or you've got your chat and participants one mm. open. Because if you've got the participants on, it will tell me by the little red button. But if you don't really know, yeah. if you're an if you're an old geezer like you, mate, you probably don't know what that little button means. So Yeah. There you go, you see. And also on our PTC account, uh our one as soon as we log in, it starts recording everything. So we don't even have to press anything and they don't wow. get notified. So that's probably why I reckon as soon as they log in, they go, this is being recorded in their ears, right? Because, yeah, probably yeah. we don't have to do anything. But we just record all you people that are in our Zooms. We record you like that. So, there you go. You see, you're being watched. Mainly because it's supportive learning and we upload it to their uh, thing so the people who miss it can watch it back. But, yeah. yeah. You didn't have to explain it. We didn't actually think you were sitting there watching them. Don't worry about it. I was just, I was just, I was just basically giving a nice thing for the people who want to do and will be doing our courses. Yeah, even if you miss one of our supportive learning lives, they get to watch it. Yeah. Which yeah. leads me to say, Daniel, I believe what day is it today? Twenty fifth. The twenty fifth of May, which is what is it? Was it a week till the first of June? It is one week until PT Core arrives at your door. Wow. The there you go. <laughs> I mean, if you haven't signed up, I think what we're doing is it early bird, early bird specials, all that bullshit. Uh, we're doing that. I'm not in charge of any of that. I'm just in charge of doing it. Um, yeah, you can sign up for literally. This is the cheapest it's ever going to be. Literally, uh, and it it's going to be an absolute steal. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the cheapest it's ever going to be. We're running like a, I guess, would it, is it called an alpha test or a beta test? Because it's the first time we're running it. It it's still test? got a beta test, isn't it? Beta test. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. We or a running... soft launch. There's a loads of ways to say launch. it. Well, we, we'll be in a soft launch. Essentially, you'll be in a select group. We're still obviously going to get a fair few people on it. Um, we're going to take our time with it. We're going to drip it. We're going to make people do it. We're going to have supportive learning on each of the modules, pretty much covering everything we do to make sure everybody's up to scratch and going through it at the same pace, much like we do with our PT sessions. We probably, we're probably going to keep it around, but we don't know. We probably will do that for the future ones, but this is the one we're a hundred percent doing it. Also, we're going to be asking for use. If you're listening and you're going to do it, you're going to get kind of stuff put in that you request basically week on week or unit on unit, probably, we're going to be like, is there anything we've missed? Is there anything you feel like you needed to know or we haven't covered? Guess what? Mm. We're going to go and we do that. And then you'll get access to either that lecture, that document, that thing, um, all that kind of bullshit, okay? So once you've got content and we add content in the next course, maybe, doesn't mean you don't get it. We'll just backdate your your course. So be lovely. And this is the cheapest you're ever going to do it. And you're always going to get all the, good, the current content. I mean, sign up, mate. Or just wait, miss the first one, intake. Remember, it's only going to be intakes, guys, like university. And then wait till September and then miss out on all this fun. Uh, it'll be, it'll be more expensive. expensive as well. It'll be more expensive because my costs go up. Um, yeah. That's right. And then Dan's going to come and work for us and he's going to do a nutrition course. <laughs> <You're good. Why> <laughs> Fuck, it. Fuck it, I ain't got enough work on, so I might as well add some more to it. 
Might okay. as well do some After more. this course, I'm not writing a course for a fucking while. You know what? I'm going <laughs> to teach. I'm going to teach this one. <laughs> I'm gonna go and teach it. But yeah, seriously, go go do it. We got seven days before we like do stuff. I'm sure anybody who's been listening to this podcast has probably been hit by our adverts. Hopefully, I'm Dan. Have I been, have. You I've have been hit by me. I'm like, stop wasting your budget. Tell him, <laughs> tell him to take my email address off. Uh, yeah, exactly. He's wasting so, his budget. Wasting my budget on the stuff. So yeah, all I want is for the digital marketing team to take me to uh, to Dishoom and give me some nice interview. To be honest, and that's all they need to do. So mm. yeah, wonderful. All right, uh, but we've got some other good news as well. Hopefully, some of these guys are listening. The My Protein crew all passed their level three exams. The wow. 10... That's because they had a great. I heard it's because they had a great tutor. That's they had a great tutor, which Luke was mainly their tutor. If I'm really yeah, that's what I mean. That's what but, I mean. But, <laughs> but about ninety percent of the time, they were watching me on screen. So on the video, man. Um, I'm gonna take all the plaudits. Thank you. But well done to those guys. They've got their practical assessments in about two, three weeks. Because now um, in the level three, you have to complete your learner achievement portfolio, your laps prior um doing your practical assessments um you cannot just have that lagging on forever which i think is a good thing because people take fucking forever when they do their laps like it's coursework right if you if you haven't got a set date for when your coursework goes in you ain't doing it it just it kind of just sits aside so you have to do that before your practical exams now so they've got that in a couple of weeks which should be fun i like working weekends don't i Dan? great um yeah so you live for it mate. that's what you live for i've heard we'll, we'll i'll see all those guys but yeah congrats to them well done 100 percent, all of them not 100 percent marks but yeah all of them passed basically that's pretty good rate in it yeah wonderful so, all right congratulations and all that stuff out of the way uh you doing all right yes mate just tired <laughs> just getting the trainings catching up uh, on you now that's what um, i said yeah i think i think yeah. i had to i had to take a a sessional deload i was just i backed off basically i went off plan shit i didn't go completely off plan i just took off a set off everything and didn't do my esd i went and did some i felt so bro i went and did some incline walking instead oh my god your bodybuilder or what but i didn't i didn't i basically i wanted to catch up on some emails and note like like a load of whatsapp messages and i was like this is the perfect time to do it really uh, i've got like 20 minutes to do this instead of my esd mm. and then uh yeah i was doing that i was like but i didn't what those guys do is like hold the hold the handles and then lean back whilst they're doing the incline it's like it's no longer an incline <laughs> yeah if you lean back on an incline walk god no longer Damn. an incline <laughs> crack so, that like started 12.5 and a little walk i got pretty sweaty oh uh, Pretty sweaty. I think I was already sweaty, but yeah, I got even sweatier. But yeah, your training going good? All good? It is good, mate. Yeah, still feeling good. Still, numbers still going up in the right direction. That. I think I'm just, um, I think I'm on to week seven or eight now. So I feel oh, like yeah. I'm just a bit like, it's getting to that point now. It's a bit like, okay, cool. Like, tired. <laughs> um, but no, it's still feeling strong, all going in the right direction. Things are starting to get a little bit easier. The the real test is tomorrow night. Basketball returns first session Ooh, back. Wow, that would be interesting you, to see if my cardio has improved. Are you planning to train the day after as well? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna laugh. I want to see an update from Dan on his uh, Insta of his uh, adductors. Yeah. And how sore they are. Post my adductors are going to be. I reckon they'll be in a better way than they ha- would have been if Dan hadn't started training with. Uh, Coach Cav, um, yeah, yeah, I agree. I think, I think, it, I think, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't. I don't know. We'll see. But I'll, I'll know because I'll remember the feeling of what it's like to play basketball for the first time in a long time. I remember what that feels like. And if I feel better and I feel more, like you say, I suppose that like, fitter, I'll know instantly. I'll know because basketball it hits you pretty quick. Like once you start playing, it's like it's fucking high energy sport. So. I'll know. I'll know within uh, within about five minutes whether it's paid off or not. Nice. Um, and then I've got to remember how to fucking dribble and shoot and all that shit as well. Yeah, which is fun, not but... about that. Uh, it'll come to you. Like it's like playing playing football. Like, I just went back yeah. and just slotted in. I, I wasn't as good as I like have been previously, obviously. But there was so there was some stuff I was just like, I'm not even gonna try this. Uh, but then every I feel now like and again, with football, like... it's the same. It's probably the same as basketball. It's less 
the skills and it's more the spatial awareness the tactical movements the yeah, yeah. keeping your eye out for the people it's it's that match stuff that you you lose the actual like shoot in pass in dribble in it's it that comes back pretty quick i feel like yeah the passing stuff because i like i like sitting back and like passing threading and then uh, smashing the goal over and again. Um, but that seemed to like hang around a little bit better. But yeah, it was like shit. I'm out of position so badly. Yeah. Uh, and now yeah. I'm absolutely blowing from trying to get back in position for a rec- like a recovery run. A classic like Andy yeah. Robertson left wing back going shit. <laughs> yeah. Virgil yeah. Van Dyke's going. I'll cover you, mate. It's all right. Um, yeah. yeah. Lagging back. But yeah, it's cool. Good. Oh, wonderful. It's a fun week. So I'm not like I've basically had a front loaded week because my sister is getting married on Thursday. Um, so I am going to be at a wedding. My restrictive wedding. of It's 29 people, not 30 that are going. Yeah. Uh, because Chloe, my girlfriend, is not here right now. So thanks, Chloe, if you're listening. Um, Tom's yes. hiding. Tom's locked you in a cupboard. That's why she's not there. <laughs> Basically, I uh, got to order her food, and then I was like, "You're not coming because I want your food." It's uh, fine. Yeah. I want a nice. I want yeah. a spare seat next to me. Sorry, um, no, because she's she's away working. So unfortunately, she won't be there. But yeah, 29 people. Um, that should be fun. Be a bit weird. Get having my sister get married. Uh, that'd be funny. Has that been delayed all throughout this last year or anything? Or um, planned for that? It has not been delayed. It has been uh, redone. We would have been okay. in France. So right now, I would have been loving life and would have been at one of my uh-huh. clients' chateaus um, that they let me have, of course. Um, but yeah, we would have been over in Bergerac. And I, beforehand, had like asked for my client's house out there to have the week prior. And then I would have gone into the wedding on the weekend. So it's just changed the date slightly and changed from uh, Bergerac, lovely south of France, just outside Bordeaux, to Essex. Yep. Okay. Um, Mate, so. classier then. What you say? <laughs> it's going to be a lot classier and a little bit smaller. I think there was only many, there was maybe about seventy people going to France, so it wasn't going to be massive, but it was going to be quite nice. Um, but yeah, it's obviously a lot smaller because those are the restrictions. So I think it's a blessing in disguise because I think you get to cull some people you don't really want there so yeah yeah and then you it's all, it also gives you an excuse and you go oh sorry covid oh sorry yeah uh, so if you don't want it, if you want to bin somewhere and also there's a lot of like so a, a bit of my family won't be there right because like the old aunts and uncles and that kind of stuff aren't going to travel because of called covid and all that kind of stuff so so yeah if they're listening sorry sorry guys up from newcastle and all that <laughs> I doubt they're listening. They, have no they will idea be listening, I... definitely. <laughs> they have no idea what I do. They're like, yeah, Tom lives in London. Great, thanks. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He does That's something in London. That's good. <laughs> yeah. good. He like he like the lifts the weights and stuff. I think he ties you tidies the gyms and stuff like that. Your he? fitness instructor. Yeah, that's right. That's fitness the, that's instructor. The one. Yeah. Fitness instructor. <laughs> Mr. Oh, Motivator, yeah. that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> I do that, but yeah, wonderful, mate. Um, fun week. So we got we're gonna we've got. Dan wants to talk about expectations of weight loss. I believe that's the title of the podcast. Um, so weight loss expectations, what you would expect to lose in a day, two days, a week, fortnightly. I mean, this guy, this guy knows it all. Um, so, and then we got some questions from Insta because I uh, literally about an hour and a half before we started recording, <laughs> I put it up. I was like, oh, probably should ask somebody if they're if they if they're that keen to look at my stories then uh, yeah we've got about four questions uh, i think four four or five maybe from that that oh, brief good. period that have gone up um some of them more relevant than others not gonna lie as always as one always of them, one of them is from my sister um not the one that's getting married so yeah the ballet dancing weirdo so yeah which is always gonna be fun um yeah mate but have, have you got a protein bar i have got a carb killer yeah i'm still Lovely. waiting for, i put an order in where did i put an order in for i put an order in for somewhere we put an order in last week so some foods after, but they haven't yeah they take I forever after the the show and they had they literally said it was 10 working days so i'm that's not looking good even for next week oh so i might go on like i might yeah tomorrow at some point 
look at some other stuff. So basically I walked into, so I've decided whilst we're doing this, I'm going to walk into my local supermarket. So I went back into Sainsbury's because this guy was actually okay last time. And it is the other Misfit bar that they have. And the Misfit bar was, oh, it was okay last time. Like the, uh, the vegan plant-based bullshit. Um, sorry, good bar. Um, and this is the one that like, so this is chocolate caramel. I've got Misfits chocolate caramel, which you can buy from Sainsbury's. I think I'm going to go into Holland and Barrett next time and see what you can get from there. But I don't really like Holland and Barrett. I'm not oh, a big yeah. fan. I feel like it's a bit airy fairy, and they're going to try and sell me stuff. And I'm going to be like, look, most of this stuff is bullshit. Just eat food. Um, well, your protein bars. So yeah, they probably won't like me if I, if I say that. <laughs> No, they won't, Tom. But that's what that's what it is. I just don't like the fact they sell all that shit. I just like I don't like and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's like, like they, there's ooh, some good yeah. stuff and then there's some bad stuff. It's like a, it's a shop with no morals. I feel like, but yeah, yeah, that's what I hate about it. So misfits, I'm gonna go with. What are you gonna go with, Daniel? I'm not gonna bother because I've just got carb killers and everyone knows what they taste like. Everyone so knows like... what carbs are. I've got well, they know what most of them taste like. You take you you do your misfits bar. Um, I'll wait until the swallow some foods come back. But yeah, I mean, I've yeah. got a dark chocolate raspberry grenade carb killer. I've got the white chocolate peanut again, salted caramel. They're all good flavors, you know. They're not going to be anything people don't know. Oh, or whilst, you know. Whilst, we're, whilst we're talking through that and I get a thing, but give us in that box, have you got the list of what, you, what you've what you had? Because give us a quick give us a quick ranking, one to five or something, of carb killers. Oh, right. Well, the best one... Is one, one of the best ones is the newest one they've got, the salted caramel. The chocolate chip salted caramel is very, very good because it's a different, slightly different recipe, a bit softer. I really like that one. The dark chocolate raspberry is also good. The white chocolate and peanut is probably one. It's a very, very good one, but it's a bit too sickly, that one, for me, I think. And then for me, the cookies and cream is right at the top. I just love it. I don't know what it is about it. I don't know if it's because it tastes more like a biscuit. I don't know. Um... And I had chocolate chip cookie dough today of that, which was good. But the top five tend to be the ones that are most recent, except the apple crumble one, which is absolutely dreadful. Do, do not order that ever. Just not worth it. Um, the birthday cake one was awful. I really don't like that at all. Um, just, just plain vanilla, boring. Nah, not a fan. Not a fan of that one. Um, the what else what other ones are there let me have a little look at the what other ones i got um the jaffa quake was again like bang average white chocolate cookie bang average the peanut nutter bang average um the one that annoys me that they got rid of was the banana one i thought that was very very good but they got rid of that one no they don't do that it was limited edition yeah. but if i was to do top five it's chocolate chip salty caramel number one cookies and cream number two uh, dark chocolate raspberry number three. Um, probably white chocolate salt peanut four. And then it is chocolate chip cookie dough number five. Lovely. There you go. Mm-hmm. There's your order. That's the top five. Good. Right. Verdict. Misfits bar. These are good. Um, oh, the plant based bar. It can't be good. It can't it's be so, good. It's so, it's so annoying. That, like the last one I liked, didn't I? And I did mention I'm yeah. absolutely Hank Marvin at the top, so it might be that, mate. Um, I'm not too sure whether that's the thing. I might order a Wagon Mama for the podcast just in case, um, basically. But the plant-based... Oh, I wish I could order a Wagon Mama. <laughs> plant-based chocolate caramel. I think it's better than the other one I had. That was dark light chocolate raspberry. And again, it's... Mm. It's 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 the fact that they've got those little protein crispies, like with a caramel. It's got protein crispies, caramel, and then a, a decent natural bar and like chocolate in it. It mm. tastes really good. I'm not gonna lie, like the crisp. It's like having a Mars That's bar annoying. with some crispies and stuff on it. Um, and, the, and like the the earthiness of always having whatever protein it is, the vegan stuff, is not not bad. Like how much protein in it? Uh, 16 grams so that's the thing it's slightly mm. small but it is only a 45 gram bar at 186 calories which okay. ratio wise is probably about right, so really basically if they made yeah. it a little bit bigger it would have the, the equivalent 20 grams and it would be okay right so yeah you've got less than one gram of sugar which is on the front 
because night sugar kills people. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's all right. It's okay. I I would quite happily grab those instead of like some of the other crappy bars in Sainsbury's. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Misfits bar. I'm gonna Good get to know. Oh wait, protein. My protein. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, can't do that. <laughs> can't do that. Not allowed. Oh, no, allowed. I'm gonna give you my code, and I still so, no, I've not I've not given anybody my code. <laughs> I'm the worst influencer ever. What do you? What, yeah, nah, you... Nah, I just I just want it. I just want give me the clothing and stuff. Um, yeah, I need more workout tops. <laughs> so it's all just I'm free like, stuff. Oh, just, just want free stuff. Yeah, I got a nice bag. So, I like that. Good. I'll be using that later. Um, lovely. All right, protein bar review done. All right, let's dip into this, Daniel. Weight loss expectations. Yeah, so this has come about. I did a I did an IGTV video on this. So if you want to listen to that or watch that first, head over to there uh, and then come back. Pause this. Watch that. Come back. Um, is that we? I, I notice it a lot with us, so many people, and my clients do it, and I always try and make sure they don't get too excited about it is that they celebrate like losing half a kilo or a kilo overnight you know like when you know when you, you know you're dieting and someone's and you have a coach if you have a coach or you you know your weight stays the same for three days and then it drops half a kilo you're like yes dropped overnight half a kilo overnight or you dropped a kilo some people can drop a kilo overnight that's not body fat like it's just not but it's not body fat and people have a really bad relationship with the scales And as a coach that asks their clients to weigh daily, the question is, well, why get me to weigh daily if like, you don't want me to worry about it? And I said this to to Mike the other day, we were talking about it. And I actually use body weight to tell me more about the client's current lifestyle status than anything else. I look at weight more so for stress as a stress response than, than anything. So I look at sleep quality, and stressful life situations, I'll look at weight uh, or cycle, time of the month, those things. They are far more predictable. They are far more predictable things that you can gauge from someone's weight than fat loss. So I delved into the numbers. I did some very, very simplistic maths and I did it for the Blitz group and I've done it for other people. And I did it for the video. And I worked out that if you're roughly trying to shoot for a three and a half thousand calorie deficit a week, which is what most people shoot for, 500 calories a day, um, because it's kind of somewhat, I hate the word sustainable, but it's somewhat easier to do than if you do like a thousand a day. So let's just say 500 calories a day, right? If you're looking to, you know, three and a half thousand a uh, calories in a week, that in theory means that you lose half a kilo in a week. That's what you're, you're shooting for on average, right? And that equals 70 grams a day of fat loss. Seven zero, like go weigh that out in like, you know, sugar or salt or oil and you'll see how fucking pitiful that is and set of scales they just can't pick it up like they wouldn't be able to register that amount of fat loss if you were to keep everything constant everything constant on the scales that is 0.07 most scales go in 0.1 up or down so weight scales wouldn't even be able to register it some of them right and the thing that frustrates me is people then see the scales go down by half a kilo or a kilo overnight and they celebrate. Oh my God, it's amazing. It's great. I've lost this much weight. And then my, my point of view is that the reason that they then get upset when they see a kilo go on overnight is because they celebrate the fact it goes down by a kilo. And the reality is that neither of it, neither of them, they're, they're going down or they're going up is body fat. And I said the other day as well, I mean, so me and Mike also talk, chat about this. I said it on that call. I said, the higher the amount of weight loss or gain overnight, the more likely it is it's not body fat. Like, the more likely it is. Like, because it's just ridiculous. Like, it's physiologically impossible to lose or gain that amount of body fat overnight. And it just, it just strikes me as odd that people get so worried and upset about these numbers. But then it occurred to me that the reason is because they celebrate the fact that they lose a kilo in a week or they lose two kilos in a week. And then the next week, they lose none. And I'm like, yeah, but over the two weeks, you've still lost fat every day because you've adhered to your diet. You've stuck to things. You know, you've done all the right things. But it's just not been changed on the scales. And then, like, But why is that? And I was like, well, because assuming your body is 50% water, it's probably a little bit more than that. 
it's probably a little bit more than that. Assuming it's 50% because it's easier for the maths. If you're 80 kilos, that means that there is 40 kilos of water in your body, which is 40,000 grams. So do you think possibly that when you go to bed one day and you wake up the next day, that the 40,000 grams of water in your body may have fluctuated by 70 grams one way or the other? I'd say there's a pretty high chance that it might be. Do you know, it's quite a big number. And they just don't understand that unless you're weighing out your sweat, your piss, your shit, the amount of food going in, the amount of food left in your body, um, you know, all these things, you, you're never going to know what that, where that number's at, how much salt you ate the day before, how many carbs you had the day before. And then we started talking about, okay, your body can store, you know, roughly 10 times the amount of weight you've got in kilos as glycogen. So if you're 80 kilos, you can store 800 grams of carbs as glycogen in your body. If you're dieting, that number gets depleted. Your body doesn't stop up those stores. It stays. So let's just say, for sake of argument, you're fully depleted. You've got no carbs stored in your body. You would have 800 grams of carbs, which would also mean that you then have, with that, three times the amount of water stored with them, right? So all of a sudden, you start looking at these numbers and go, hang on, that's 3,200 grams there made up of carbs and water. That, again, fluctuate on any given day based on how much you move that day, how many carbs you've eaten, whether you've trained, right? What time of day you ate those carbs? And I'm sat there going like all these big numbers, 3,200, 40,000. And you're worrying because you're worried about whether you're seeing a 70 gram loss on the scales overnight. Because that's what you're trying to achieve every day, 70 grams. And like all these numbers are moving up and down constantly. And then people get worried because they see the number go up, but yet they celebrate it when it goes down. And I'm out. And the whole point of the video was to say, none of it is anything to worry about going down. Stop celebrating. It's not fat loss. You've not lost that much weight overnight. It's not fat. Calm down. So likewise, don't get fucking upset when it goes up that amount. Weight is a great indicator of your progress if your goal is fat loss or muscle gain over a three to 12 month period. It is not useful to look at day to day, week to week. It's fucking useless to measure fat loss. I measure it with my clients to measure so many other things. Like I said, stress, lifestyle, sleep quality, carb intake, all these sorts of things, right? It's time of the month. And it just needs to just fuck off this concept of like, oh, overnight I lost a kilo. You didn't. You really didn't. Like, seriously, have a word with yourself. Have a word with yourself because you didn't. You just didn't. Um, and and it's, it's one of those things where you should only compare your weight, like I said, two, three months previous to what it was previous. Has it changed? If it hasn't changed in two, three months, then you can look at stuff and go, something's wrong. But likewise, if over that two, three months, the weight hasn't changed, but your waist has come in 10 centimeters, you're lifting heavier than ever and your clothes fit better, fuck off worrying about the weight. I couldn't give a fuck. It doesn't mean you haven't lost body fat. It just means it's not shown on the scales because of all the other things that are going on. You may have gained muscle tissue. You may have gained carbs in your muscle. You may be more full. You may be taking creatine. And there's just like, you're not going to ever detect 70 grams coming off the scales each day. So don't even fucking bother trying. And it, and it coaches as well. If you're listening to this, your PT, stop celebrating your client's weight loss overnight by that amount because you celebrating it and going, oh, that's great, teaches them to then get upset when it goes up by the same amount overnight. What you need to do is educate your client and say, well, all that's happened overnight is that, you know, when the weight was stagnant for the last two weeks, you were stressing about it and you got more stressed and you've just done that big board meeting right? That you're really stressed about and you've had a weekend off with the family and, and whatever, and you've now not been working on a Monday, you're new low weight. It's because the stress has gone. You've dropped loads of fucking water. You need to educate people that that's the reason why that all the work they were doing previously is ad now adding up and it now counts and it's now shown on the scales. That's all it is. So that's, the, that's all I want is that I think it's really important that those of you who are dieting, listen to this, understand 70 grams a day is not detectable. Stop fucking worrying. Stop looking for it. It doesn't happen. <laughs> Three or 12 months. Coaches, listen to this. Don't let your clients celebrate overnight weight loss like that. And don't you celebrate it because it doesn't happen. Understand the numbers. Look into the numbers. Do, do like do what I did. Break it down for them. And people soon realize. And I, and I also did the breakdown of um, Stephanie Buttermore did the 10,000 calorie challenge. And she did a whole YouTube case study where she worked out how much body fat she'd actually gained from doing that. So her maintenance is two and a half thousand calories. But basically because she'd been dieting, again, depleted of glycogen, because your body upregulates neat, because of the thermic effect of feeding, all this sort of stuff, she actually only gained half a pound of body fat. 
like on a DEXA scan. She did an actual DEXA scan. She got tested and all that sort of stuff. Her weight had gone up fucking loads, obviously, <laughs> as it would. But the actual amount of body fat had gone up by half a pound. So 125 grams. Like nothing. Like nothing. And this is what annoys me when people get worried that they, oh, I had a burger and chips. Oh, I shouldn't have had a burger and chips. Oh, my weight's gone up a kilo and a half. Yes, because it's salt, carbs, water, loads of shit, all that <laughs> yeah. sort of stuff. You don't gain fat that quickly. Forget about it. If you do that 10 days in a row, yes, worry about it, <laughs> right? There's something going wrong. But the one-off is just not an issue. And it, it's the thing that I get frustrated with is if you don't know what goes into that number on the scales, don't fucking panic about it. I know what goes into it, right? If you don't know, just do what your coach tells you to do and you'll be fine. Um, but yeah, it's just, um, it's just frustrating. And that's kind of where it came from was people – celebrating losing a kilo overnight i'm like stop fucking celebrating it's nothing it's not body fat weird isn't it so, yeah. it's like the it's like the adverse thing for like training where you'd celebrate a lift or something like that you'd celebrate that on that um but it's obviously the accumulative work that's going to get there but maybe you but you it's it's but i guess it's the same really if you look at a training goal right you're only ever going to test at the end of a phase so in theory scale weight you should probably only ever like you said test at the end of a phase so you, it's you like, run it's, it's like you run the you... cycle of trying to lose weight for the next two months because that's all the compound heavy strength exercise you're gonna do so hopefully that yeah. load goes up on the bar so you're gonna do the next two months of dieting hard so that weight on the scale goes down and then that yeah. but that might be plausible so I think that's a good way of, in terms of looking at it, it's like, why we, we don't test our training every week? Why the fuck are we trying to test our body weight every day? It's insane. Like, and it actually is, taking that as ridiculous. gospel. Like, it it's fine, because obviously I do the same as you, Dan. I, I, I get my clients to weigh every day if they can. Like, if it's feasibly possible to do. If not, they're going to weigh themselves every single time they're in the gym with me because we have scales. And it's like, fine. So that's their regular thing, just so I can track other shit. And I want to see an average. And I, I say that so much. I was like, I want to see the average go down. I don't care what it was on the particular day. I want to see the average and make a graph from it. Okay? That's all we want to see. We want to see that line. It doesn't matter if it's like this, but it's going this way kind of thing, if we're really worried about that. But that's not the be all and end all because it's something we teach on body comp. It's just like, all right, well, we're going to take so many other measures and probably the biggest ones we're going to take are the measurements of you. So that's probably better. Measurements and photos trump scale weight, any coaches out there, but they take slightly longer than stepping on a scale for the general pop. So therefore they don't do it. But if you're invested and you paid for it, then fucking do it. I understand. Yeah, and, and look, and, and I've had it before. Where people go, oh, but you know, if it's triggering, why do I need to? You know, I, I get worried about it, or I get stressed about the scales. Why do I need to weigh every day? And like, for the very reason, because you get stressed about it, you need to <laughs> yeah. understand, understand and see scale. that that number goes up and down. Even if you have a great day and a perfect day, and you do everything exactly perfectly, it, it may go up the next day. It may not change yeah. the next day. You need to understand that that what you do the day before you weigh has no relevance to that scale weight. You need to start seeing that, and we get it all the time, and it happens every single blitz the first two weeks people are like oh my fucking god i hate wearing myself every day i feel like shit week four hang on a minute my scales aren't really moving but i'm noticing my clothes feel loads better and i'm feeling better in general all this sort of stuff good shit week six all of a sudden oh i'm not really not bothered by the scale weight anymore i just realize it's just another number it doesn't it doesn't define me and i feel great i'm like yeah i know we told you this in week two you didn't listen. <laughs> but it's just something you have to experience you do have to experience yeah. it um but yeah, it's just it's just so common, and it's, the reason is because it, it's it's the naivety. It's not knowing what goes into that number. The 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 theory is well, it's body fat because I've eaten food, so therefore it's fat. And, and, and on a very simplistic level, it's like well, well no, that's not, not how the human body works. <laughs> that's a very simplistic way of looking at it. Like you assume that all food you eat gets turned to fat, yeah. and I think that's what people think. They think eating food fat. The more food I eat, the more fat I have. And it's like, no, but there's more, there's more to it than that. Like you need a certain amount of food to live. They, people kind of get that element to it. Yeah. But then it's like, but a burger doesn't contribute to you having the calorie requirement to live, but a salad does. Or you know, <laughs> salmon, salmon and green veg does, but burgers don't. That's different. Your body thinks, that's di- you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. But you sometimes have to know the numbers and break it down to, to really kind of understand it, I suppose. 
I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But they all found it very, very helpful, which was great on the live call. They all said how you know useful it was, and I was. They're king, scared amazing. of you. Well, They're well. scared of you, Dan. Basically, they're incredibly scared. <laughs> when you get ranty, I don't know whether you're nice to them because on here you haven't got any faces or anybody that re- you, you, we no, can't I, see. I, I, listening. I did the same. I did the same. <laughs> I, I, I was my usual self. I just sort of said, "Look, you know, you're being fucking idiots. You need to get a grip. You know, <laughs> that's the way I am." But um, it's. I think people appreciate that. Like, you know, it's, it's the no bullshit kind of approach is what people need. And you can't really sugarcoat this stuff. It's, it's to me, it's basic, but it's only once you've explained it to people that it, they understand it and they realize, Oh, actually shit. I didn't realize this many things contributed to it all. Um, and, and the other thing as well, just to finish on is that one of the biggest influences on your water balance in your body is your hormones. And they're another thing you have no control over. So it's like, stop worrying about this shit. Like you can't eat hormones. You can't fucking like worry. You can't manage them on a, on a, on a, on a, you know, a minute level on a day-to-day basis. You just have to deal with whatever's thrown at you with that. And (laughs) just an FYI, that does not mean go and do some fucking Poliquin bullshit and trying to manage them. Do not try it. No, you can't. Do not try to manage them. Okay. Any fucking (sighs) trainers out there go, but I've got, what, what's the, what's their course? Oh, it's fucking, Biosig. Biosig. Fuck that off. Doesn't work. Fucking moronic. Just let it happen. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Like, you haven't got fat calves because you have too much estrogen. Doesn't matter. Work like that. And all right, all right. How do we get our estrogen down? Take this supplement that I sell. Oh, interesting. Thank you. Alongside weight training, losing body yeah. fat, losing <laughs> more. Yeah. Yeah, biosync. If you anybody, if any trainer is thinking about doing that course, fuck that right off. Do mine. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, should we answer we got a couple of questions? Couple of questions. All right, um, we got. I'll probably answer these on live, on live on a story as well. Fifteen seconds worth. Fifteen second answers, and then they can fucking listen Ooh. to this one properly. Um, all right, training for a ten k. Snore. Don't do it. Um, do anything worse <laughs> training for a 10 gay should i change my strength workout reps weight and exercises do you want him <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't really context i don't know what you're doing right now um so i'm not too sure i'm strength workout i'm guessing you're doing lower <laughs> stuff um yeah get strong fuck it i think yeah be, be safe it's just so underrated like you know so, people don't so people underrated. don't talk about it I think with 10Ks, I think what people um, underrate is, uh, obviously, I'm going to fall on this side. Oh, hey, Molly. Um, Someone's turned up. Molly's decided to turn up. <laughs> nice. I think what people underrate on uh, on becoming, like, doing a 10K is the kind of soft, basic plyometrics. Um, is That's what I would look at. If I'm going to add in anything, it would be soft, basic plyometrics, like little bounding drills and stuff like that, because guess what? That's not even musculature, and it's going to help become more springy and running really fast. But yeah, I'd get strong. Get strong and quicker, basically. I I, move, I, I think quicker. it's... I, I posted this the other day, like whatever your fitness goal, I don't care what any fitness goal you've got, you cannot go wrong getting stronger. You just can't. Like, oh, yeah. There is no negative. There is no drawback of being stronger in any fitness goal, any fitness goal. I don't believe it. I don't believe there is any drawback. Yeah. I think, yeah. It's only positives. Do, do a general phase, like keep go full body, full body, full body, like probably two, three times a week, crack on. And then like, then start to like, look at it stuff and be like, maybe you stay away from bilateral compound. That's the only thing I'd say is like, probably you're doing step ups split squats and yeah uh, lunge definitely patterns definitely definitely in, definitely unilateral stuff instead yeah. of compound movements like all over at unilateral or offsets dances and stuff like that um which is cool i actually did that i should have videoed it with my clients today so i was doing like offset like squats and then their next thing was um yeah b stance or stagger stance or kind of natural stance um vertical jumps um which yeah it's like baffling to people when I make people go, no, you then have one foot in front of the other, like for a little bit. I don't, I don't care how, what you jump. I just want you to jump and hit that for me from a standing yeah, stance. I think, I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of that as well. I think if you're an athlete, 
uh, or you're like someone that does something that's a bit more a bit more extreme potentially that kind of thing yeah. i think there's a lot of use a lot of benefit of doing that sort of work like your main compound lifts can be stronger bigger bilateral making sure your form's good of course but i think a lot of your supplementary movements and lifts can be that sort of stuff i think it's really <laughs> o- overlooked because you're never you're never like you say when you jump for basketball going right are my feet there like, <laughs> yeah. that, you know i never you've got someone pushing you right. you know yeah it's i think it's a really good thing i think you're gonna i think we're gonna see it more and more over the next year of training i think that's gonna be something we're gonna see a lot yeah. more it's um, like I, I, more. i've done it for a while like beat stance broad jumps with people it's like i was like when was the last time you just lined up like lovely jump over this bit no if you're like jumping up a curb or something like that or you jump in somewhere you're gonna be like off one foot most of the time i I, like make my clients do a lot of like single leg hop like jump things so if they're hopping up or single leg box hops and stuff like that because they're like oh why are we doing this odd they do panic all the time like and the amount of panic of jumping up a step on one leg and i'm like you definitely, definitely can do it. I wouldn't make yeah. you do it if you couldn't. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm going to trip. I'm like, and what's going to happen if you do? Like, nothing, number one. <laughs> you're going to fall over, look funny, and I'm going to laugh, but you're still going to get up and do it again. <laughs> yeah. Basically. All right, uh, that ends that question. All right, um, we've got one more training-related one and then one more stupid one. Um, how do I, how do you... How do you structure your one-to-one session? Uh, right. Been pointed out that I can't fucking speak. <laughs> Sessions. One of my clients teasing me the whole fucking time today. I was like, I bet. she was like, can you speak up? Like she did, she knew about it, but like her husband told her, cause I trained him as well. And uh, she was like, I can't quite hit. Can you, can you speak up? Can you? It's like, Yes, Anna, I can't speak properly. Okay, it's fine. I've got these in. (laughs) We're all having a laugh. Um, Yeah, okay. How do you structure your one-to-one sessions, e.g. two compounds, then super sets or tri-sets, et cetera? Obviously, it depends on the individual, uh, number one. I think think it's... In terms of uh, one to one and online, I think again, I personally different. Um, I think one to one, you 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 can not be a bit more call it audibles necessarily, but again, based on people coming in and what time they come in, based on how stressed they are, I think you can make a lot better decisions. Again, what equipment's available, um, I think you can plan a rough plan, but then you can, if you're a good in person PT, you have to be flexible because you can plan the perfect thing at the end, but if the ski erg's taken and it's you want to do that and someone's on it doing a marathon you need to think on your feet and think right what else can i do you Am I going to be in john clark's gym and then yeah yeah, yeah. You ain't getting on um, that one. <laughs> but i think i think to be honest like in person pt that, that's tom's domain and you'd probably do exactly what's on the pt core i assume and it's exactly how i would do it <laughs> exactly how you do it um, exactly how i would do it it's going to be <laughs> like a quarter warm-up quarter strength quarter like compound superset yeah, tricep we, we weight movements little, and then 15 minutes little, of little condition. thing about it didn't we yeah like we, we put it into five because luke luke forced me to have a cool down in there and he was like what do you do for a cool down i was like let him walk home walk um, out the gym. <laughs> <laughs> i'm getting paid for that um no we do five minutes of cool down um sometimes i'd let them cool down if they want to basically i'm like you can do what you like if you feel like you need to do this do this do this i'm not going to coach you for it because it's basically the same thing you did at the start if i'm really honest <laughs> like just a really tempo slow version of that would be nice um i think people are like oh we must cool down properly i'm like yeah if you're an athlete and you need to train the next day like properly and hard i get that like you we used to do it right with football players and we'd take them for like what would be a fast paced cool down and stuff like that to properly bring them down to a level so they're not that sore but most of the general pop aren't going to get that from from a 60 minute session but yeah i'd be like i'm 10 15 20 minutes of warming up but warm up does consist of rolling out floor based mobility dynamic based mobility 10 yard locomotion mobility that is not just mobility that's like body weight lunges body weight lateral lunges all this kind of stuff moving and then it has a loaded warm-up which for some people might be like oh this is circuit training 
Like, no, it's just a loaded warm up for three pounds that you're probably going to go and lift in your compound exercise. And then that also has, we have upper body, lower body power, which is the most neglected, I'm sorry, neglected bit in all one to one personal training or online personal training. People do not teach people how to be powerful and catch themselves for injury risks. Don't happen. It just doesn't happen. Like, like, all right, and when do I they? Do I don't it? do it. I put my hands up. I, I don't do it. Yeah, it's just like, all right. Well, the biggest injury risk for most people is the 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 inability to decelerate on movement, which is power mm. and being able to move quickly and decelerate and absorb. Which mm. yeah, it just doesn't happen. So that always that happens in every one of my clients. No matter if they're seven years old, they're doing some sort of power based movement. But like, oh what? I'm like it's relative. It's just moving fast for them. That's it. It doesn't matter. Um, so there's some sort of med ball base work, a thousand percent. Um, and then I move into the compound stuff. So I've already covered that. Let's say like tops 20 minutes of that stuff and it just cycles through. And when I say that, like with the, the warm up, and you obviously do that in PT core, it doesn't mean you have to do like rounds and rounds of it. Like I'll literally make somebody do an exercise once, sit. And they're moving on to the next one. They just have exercise variation. They've hit a similar movement pattern once, one set, one set of 10 there, one set of eight there, one set of five there, off we go and do something else. Um, people, because people look at my program sometimes, they're like, you get through all of that. And I'm like, yeah, I've only got one set programmed. Like, but they do it so often and it becomes so automatic when they walk in the gym, it's fine. And then, yeah, I do compounds. It depends on phases at the start. Um, so I'll have compound basic kind of basically it's normally going to be a, a compound movement with a some sort of core based or upper base movement as a tricep. But if you're in the first five months, five, six months of a phase with me, you will be doing triceps pretty much nonstop free things and you will be working to a work intensity uh, you'll be getting yeah your kind of volume up most of the time and you your main thing on the tricep is what i'm looking for and then the other two are kind of supplementary uh, not really taxing out the main thing there's always going to be a strength based element to the first one so the first tricep and the second tricep and then it's like filler i guess you can call it if you really want to but i'm really concerned about those two and then we've probably got core based anti-rotation rotation lateral flexion all that kind of bullshit right then after six phases, I think it's five five or six phases. I could look, but I could be wrong. Then you start doing just pairs of things. And then you start looking at like deadlifts with like kettlebell swings or something like that, or power swings or like pull-ups and all that bullshit. Yeah. So then you, you do like two compounds. My clients never, ever only do one exercise. Complete waste of time. Ever. PT. Ever. Complete waste of time. Yeah. And like the only plausibility from I don't I don't think there is a plausibility for it. If there isn't. I'm truly, truly honest. Even if you're Carl if you're lifters, good, if you're yeah, like, I just don't. Even, there's no there's no there's no even powerlifters. If I were to train them, I would be getting them to do probably some anti-based core-based thing mm -hmm. in between their big sets because it's not really doing. It's not going to tax them to the, the degree because. They're still going to be training to it, like the, the intensity that I want, that kind of thing. Yeah. And they might be doing, and it doesn't mean like that tricep I could, I talked about, it could be like fucking heavy deadlifts. Like you're doing doubles, or something like that. Then your other two exercises could be, yeah, like all I want is two like side planks. And then I want a kind of, I don't know, some glute uh, kind of hip stretch. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's, that's my tricep in, in essence. People are like, oh, we're stretching. Still an exercise. Fine. Um, I can put that in. But it's just how you kind of put it in and correct, Daniel. Paying for the service is insane. Like, now we're going to sit here for three minutes because that's what the literature I just, that's says. for me. Like, I think that's oh, the, no, that's probably the main matter. difference. <laughs> the main difference between, I think that's the main difference between online and in-person. If, if you're an in-person PT, you should be maximizing that hour because you've got that person there for the hour. And online, you've got the updates, you've got the check-ins, you've got a little bit more of the accountability side of things, but also with your training, I'm programming for them maybe four or five sessions a week. So I'm like, yeah. okay, we don't have to get in as much volume in this one session. Whereas if you're seeing someone twice a week, 
you should be able to get the same amount of volume into two sessions as I might do in four with an online client. Yeah. No, you should be able to do it. And like I said to did last week, my frequency in my training has gone right up in terms of each session I do. I'm doing a lot more. Like if I added up the amount of times I'm hitting each muscle group, it's gone up. And that's because, again, like like Tom said, is that you then superset and try set things because based on what your goals are, that can be very, very important. And most people in one to one PT, their goal should be the same as what mine is, what yours is, which is get stronger and get fitter. They're the two things. I'm not bothered, I'm not bothered about how big my chest or my shoulders are, my back is. I don't give a fuck about that right now. I just want to move well, move frequently and get fitter. So that's what my, my plan is. I think that's where the only difference then in online is my programs look a bit different in the sense that look, there's a warm up of a certain amount, but no way near as detailed as Tom's is like by a million miles. Um, it gives people enough to know that they can, they can do these things. They can be mobile. They're going to stretch it, take five, 10 minutes, that's kind of it. Then they go into a the main lift of the day, which is like the main one I want them to get very, very strong at, usually lower rep numbers once they've done their warm-up. They then go into then, if they're doing like an upper body day, I would usually pair a horizontal pull with a vertical, um, horizontal pull with a <laughs> horizontal push. Sorry. Um, you know, that sort of thing. So that it's kind of like, you know, push and pull in the same plane of motion, if possible for a lot of people. Or I'll do... Um, or I'll do like a, a superset with some sort of core exercise if I think they need it. But a lot of people still get the standard. You've got six exercises to do. They go through in this roughly this order if possible. Um, but I always say to people, look, if you can do these two together as a superset, do that, do it. Like don't yeah. waste time. But if you need the rest then take it. And then as you, as you go through and as you go to more of the isolation movements, it's like, right, you can do these as a superset, right? This is easy to do as a superset. But um, I'll be honest, like my programming is moving slowly more towards like, I'm like, right, you can now do this in a short time period. Like you don't need to take an hour and a half to do this. Yeah. But the caveat for that is that people are paying for my session and the result, not the hour of time it takes them to do that training session. Whereas I think as a one-to-one PT, you have, you have a duty of care to your client to make the most of every single second of that session in my opinion that's what i believe i think you do and it's, and it's it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that if you're you think the best use of that time is rest then that is the best use of that time because the rationale is that that's absolutely fine it's just like is there a better thing to be doing at that time and the chance is a hip flex a stretch yeah. is a hip flex a stretch a rest kind of yeah do you know like is yeah. it it's like it's probably you know, is external rest, rotation like, a rest yeah like yeah. you can you can it's like you know, it's, it's just thinking outside the box it, it's just like all right well a hip flexor stretch if this person actually has a little bit of uncomfortability and can't achieve like uh hip extension that well um maybe we do that intermittently with when they're doing alternated dumbbell press mm. i mean or like yeah they're they're bench pressing compound day or whatever it's like it's, it's, you don't just like don't just make them sit there like i just think that's an epic epic waste of time and expertise yeah. like consider you've gone through the training to get like where you are and you've got clients then bueno all good like keep them then <laughs> make a better other yeah. things not just pushing the bar or something like that like maybe you've got because we talk about primary secondary and tertiary goals and i believe that the basically the client drives the primary goal 100% and down agree with this but in my world and guess what I differ from and we're going to teach it I guess my way um, on the PT core than one of the biggest gyms in the country teaches it differently um, and I was like hmm, interesting what are your PT numbers what's first basis PT numbers Interesting. Obviously, it has a lot to do with that, but our retention rate is incredible compared to that. I was like, oh, okay. So in terms of goal setting, primary goal, secondary goal, and tertiary goal, I believe the coach decides the secondary and tertiary goals. And they should be either gym-based or dietary-based or whatever. Cool. And that can be in the gym. It's just it's how to get there quicker as well. And it's like, all right, this is going off on goal setting. But we'll talk about that maybe another week. It annoyed the fuck out of me when somebody said this. Um, but pure gym. Um, it was like, oh no, the, we, the, we we let the clients decide the goals. I was like, clients shouldn't decide the goal. They come to you for their expertise. <laughs> like, what the hell are you? I was like, all right, I've I've come with my map. I'm, no, what? No, you get to a captain on a ship. They're gonna take you where you want to go. Like, not, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. But they're gonna decide how to get there. So let's let them do the secondary and tertiary ones. Yeah, cool. 
really strange thing to say, I thought. But yeah, that kind of li- yeah. <laughs> links into kind of just making the most out of your program. Don't think that every minute is on the clock because I don't like that when trainers, I can see it when trainers feel pressured in a session that they're trying to come up with stuff that they think is filler or stuff like that. That just comes with a plan. Like having a plan is a different kettle of fish than not having a plan and over program. Okay. Mm. <laughs> plan for one more tri set than you really need. Cause guess what? Some clients fucking go through it so quickly and it's really annoying. <laughs> Whereas some, you're never going to get to that last one because they chat, they kind of talk, they kind of wander through the set. Like maybe you're not the correct intensity, but then that's room for improvement. And guess what? Sometimes I'm like, well, I'm just going to pick up the next session where we left off from the last one <laughs> because I'm going to complete this plan to its totality. And then that happens instead. And like I might program three days and they only get through those three days every kind of two weeks. Like if they're only doing two a session, like it's fine to do that. Um, people get too wound up, I think. But what was the question? Yeah, what? <laughs> the thing is, there's loads. Of, the thing is, there's loads of ways to do it. I think that the, the thing, the reason the answers are so convoluted is because there's so many ways to do yeah. it. Because we found this is the best way for us to do it, or the way that we like to do it. It's not doesn't the mean that way. it might be right for you and for your me. client. Well, it's yeah, best I, way think, that... I think you have to be, you have to be comfortable doing what you're doing, right? But I think if you do want to learn what I would consider more the gold standard, then I think do the PT core, right? Um, we, we, but like we've, it's, it's, we've just found, we've just found since implementing and we, we've been teaching it at third space for probably the last, well, before out COVID, like, so since we've been implementing some of this stuff, the retention rate and enjoyment rate of PT has gone up because we've been able to like, the clients do more in a session. They feel more accomplished. They're not waiting around. They get like, they have fun. God forbid the client has fun by learning new things. They don't get the same, we're doing two compound exercises. We're doing this and this tricep afterwards, which is going to relate straight to, like, hang on a minute. Like, we can do a little bit more with this, surely. Like, yes, those compound exercises are ex- like awesome. But it's really weird. You see some of the top coaches, like, I don't know, you, I don't know, you look at, like, Dean Somerset and all these guys. They don't spend a lot of time doing it. Like you don't, I feel like they probably don't, like they have them in, but then it's like all this other stuff that they're spangling around with, and it's like that's their filler, that's their tricep, that's their stuff. So, mm. yeah, I, I just don't get the bogged down and going, oh, we must do a five by five to the letter of the law. No, you don't have to do that. I do the five by five, hundred percent. But I don't think for one to one PT, that's probably the best thing that person's going for. If they only want strength, then that's pretty cool. But just make them do like five, three, one down. Like there's still room to do stuff in between that. Like that's not going to tax you out on the five, three, one. Hundred percent. I just I I think I think if people come into the gym. If someone came to me in the gym, one to one PT, and they were talking about like they wanted to you know get bigger and all this sort of stuff. And they were like, oh, I want to do strength. I like doing squats. I'd be like, that's great, but you come to me for help because you don't know what you're doing. So we'll do what I have to think about. <laughs> and I think that's the other thing, like you said about the goals there, is like, uh, I think you're, you've done this long enough to know 99% of people will do your program and they'll get the goal they want, regardless of what their goal is. Because if people come in and say, oh, I want to get stronger, or I want to look better, or I want to be healthier, whatever it is, well, you'll achieve that by doing my program. Don't worry about it. Like, yeah, yeah. You'll get that. Because yeah. I know right now you're training like trash. That's why you've come to help. <laughs> yeah. Ask for help. Basically, and it's like, that's the reality of it. That's the reality of it. If someone comes in and goes, oh, I like training lower rep ranges. Okay, cool. First exercise, we're going to do squats for lower reps or whatever we're going to do. And then we do the filler stuff and then we'll do all the shit I want to do anyway. It's like, I, I think PTs are too scared because they think that com- people come in, I want to work on my chest. So they want chest day. No, no. They just want your results and like train them properly. And you'll, and you'll do that anyway. They'll get a bigger chest. Like, I call it. it. I call it the Joel Seidman method, where literally anything will work. Anything better than what they were doing will, it will work. So doesn't even Joel Seidman <laughs> doesn't even have to be better. Could be worse. They just do it more often. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely fine. <laughs> true. So true. Or, yeah, basically, we know that. Um, all right, last question because we're we're running. Um, <clears throat> best ice lolly. Oh. Oh, easy. Oh, hang on. Ice lolly or ice cream with a stick on a stick? Is it going to be ice lolly? lolly. Ice lolly. didn't say ice cream, did it? Well, yeah, but I think it meant like on a stick, you know. Um, All right. 
Okay, right well, where, the does, where does Solero sit? Where does, where does Solero sit in this? Where does Solero sit, for example? Because that's like lolly, but ice cream. Is it a lolly? Yeah. Is it in the lolly section? Or is it in the ice cream? Right. Section? If we're talking lolly, as in like, it, lolly, has to be, it has to be ice based. Ice based, right? Okay, that, that's the that's I what think it does okay, not cool. have ice cream in it. If it's ice based, it's a twister, hands down, because that's ice based. It's got a bit of ice cream on, but it's ice based yeah. twister. Twister. Yeah. I think I, I'd have to keep concur because, like, you keep, keep your calippos. They get boring after a while. They just uh, get bored not bothered. Yeah. Not bothered about them. I get annoyed with the end as well. The calippo. Yeah. But if you, but if it's anything on a stick, then it's biscoff ice cream on a stick. So uh, that's, <laughs> that could be anything. Too. I'm gonna just, I bring a stick. I'm gonna shove a box of Ben and Jerry's on it. But like, so a stick down, it's fine. Well, <laughs> Ben and Jerry's right, on a stick. Smart ass. <laughs> right, smart ass. Um, yeah, I was talking to somebody about rocket lollies today. They're, they're a bit shit. Um, yeah, then, overrated. But yeah, it's a hard one, isn't it? Like actual like lollies. You know what I used to love? They're not lollies though, but uh, those uh, Solero little ball things. Solero shots. Yes. They yes, were good, yes, yes. weren't they? Like limey flavour. Um, they were great. Where'd they gone? They don't exist anymore. They were all the rage when I was a kid. No idea. So, what about, you've got, what else we got? You got fabs? Nah. I do like a fab. Yeah, it's not a top fucking ice lolly though, is it? Come on. Then you got yes. fruit pastel lollies. No, no. <laughs> fruit pastel lollies are bad, aren't they? They're not great. And then they're always quite just. Twister's number one, apparently. You know, Twister's like proper up there. It's got to be, hasn't it? I think. It's got to be. Yeah, they smashed it. No. Yeah, yeah, Twister for me. No, there's no, there's no point in looking. No competition. Jolly Rancher have got some. Very interesting. I've never tried the Round Trees watermelon. That looks quite cool. Oh, actually, Daniel, nah. I think I've come back. I'm going to have to go back. It's probably the thing that I probably do actually have most is like a sun lolly. I don't think they exist like that anymore, though. Fruit mis- the triangle, it's, like. They're the like, ones. it's like a triangle. It's called a jubbly now, isn't it? A jubbly. Yeah. I do love those. No. They're not better than a twister, though, mate. Come on. They're sort not. your life out. No. I've written, I've written best ice lollies, and they've got like feast in here. That's like it's not an ice lolly; it's an ice cream. We've established it's ice cream, yeah. Cornetto, definitely an ice cream. Snickers, Maltesers, definitely an ice cream. So, yeah. Looking on Joe, they've got Soleros in there as well. I think it's too creamy. It's too much cream. It's an ice cream, not an ice lolly. Choc ice. Oh, we got, yeah. we got a little list. I feel like we will go into this next week, maybe. Uh, mini milks, no. Funny feet, don't know what that is. Ribena lolly, poor. Rocket lolly, poor. Nobbly bobbly, that's just a fab without the other shit. Twix, ooh, Twix ice creams never really took off, did they? Um, fruit pastels, boring. Mars, Magnum. Magnum, that can't be, not, that's not a lolly. <laughs> Solero, this is no. where I feel like they've just gone for, they've gone for your definition of if it's on a stick, it's an ice, ice lolly. Yeah. Um, so Maxi- Maxibon, that's not an ice lolly. That's like an ice cream sandwich Ooh. kind of thing, isn't it? Fab. I like Fab. Maltesers. Nope, not really. Ice cream. And Snickers ice cream. It literally says it on it. Ice cream. Yeah. Um, Come on. Cornetto. Snickers. Cornetto. I wouldn't be like, that's what? Uh, Calippo. Feast. Cone. Yeah. Oh. I, do, I do love a feast. They're good. Uh, Twister. And then Mr. Freeze. Ice pop. Ice pole. No. Too boring, basic. They? They're so basic. Um, yeah, interesting. So we're going for Twister. I will give you that. I'll give you the Twister. And then I'll have number Got two. Will be um, a... Uh, when I was a kid, they were called Sun Lollies. But I do know I bought them as Jubblies. But I still re- reference them because I'm old as a Sun Lolly. Okay. Lovely. All right, mate. Bring us to a close. I think I think we've rambled on for nearly an hour. So. Time for dinner. <laughs> I know. I've got to have some dinner. Um, <laughs> it's only only quarter to ten. That's when I when it's I normally fine. eat now. Anyway, so apparently, um, who knew that you could go to sleep? All right, mate. Um, so this time next week, PT Core would have been launched, and I would have lost even more of my life because I'll be teaching that. So wonderful. There you go. Wonderful. Enjoy. Good. I hope somebody who listens to this show signs up. 
be a bit disappointed for them. Um, <laughs> Someone should. <laughs> Someone should. Uh, yeah, we'll be fine. Obviously, if you're an existing student, you're already on it. So crack on. I'm assuming an existing student probably listens to this. So let's go. All right, mate. So, Any so. other business? Not for me. Not from you. Not from me, mate, either. Uh, we will catch you next week. I will report back on a COVID wedding. First one of the year. Oh, yeah. Very good. Catch you later. Yeah.